President Trump has directed $12 billion into a plan to develop a coronavirus vaccine in record time. It's called Operation Warp Speed. The goal? To have 300 million doses of a safe, effective vaccine by January of 2021. Enough to inoculate first responders and the highest risk groups in the country. It's risky, it's expensive, but we'll be saving massive amounts of time. We'll be saving years. But the pressure to get it out is forcing pharma companies to rush through steps. That's dangerous because it could result in a product that causes side effects or just doesn't work. And the lack of transparency on how this money is being spent and how decisions are being made worries some experts. I think Operation Warp Speed is a black box. Operation Warp Speed is trying to move as quickly as they can to develop a vaccine. And there's always a balance there between how much you inform the public along the way and actually move forward with a program. Congress is also concerned and recently lost an investigation into Operation Warp Speed. More details about the program have started to emerge, but only after key decisions were made. Now that we have completed our uh, major agreements, we can talk. We are going to talk nonstop about everything. And nearly everything about this effort is unprecedented. Creating a new vaccine has always been a long, complicated, and expensive process that can sometimes take up to a decade. Trump indicated that the formula could be finalized as early as October which would mean a total turnaround time of six months. It just uh, doesn't show the respect that should be shown to, to, to nature, which gives its secrets up slowly and grudgingly and often with a human price. A development for a vaccine or any drug that the FDA approves typically unfolds in three phases. In phase one trials, researchers must prove that a vaccine formula is safe and has a low risk of side effects in a small group of about 10 to 30 people. In phase two, that formula is given to a larger group, from 50 to 300. The test group for the third and final phase for any new vaccine typically includes 10,000 people. In July, two Operation Warp Speed companies, Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech, entered phase three trials with 30,000 volunteers. It's an extraordinarily large sized group since the goal is to make this vaccine available to all Americans. Phase three is crucial because it shows how a vaccine will affect the widest cross-section of the population. As long as there's this commitment not to rush the phase three clinical trials, I think everything should be fine. Officially, Operation Warp Speed isn't skipping steps, but shortening their length while funding multiple simultaneous trials. And the mystery of Operation Warp Speed shrouds how it's funded. Around $12 billion have already been committed to six vaccine candidates, including household pharma brands like Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca. Insider recently learned that government scientists winnowed a list of nearly 100 vaccines to just 10. But the White House has not released a complete list of companies that have received funding or exactly how they're being selected. Moderna, a lesser known company before it entered the vaccine race, has received two rounds of investment, about two and a half billion dollars in total. The startup is the first Warp Speed finalist to reach phase three trials, but their technology platform has never successfully brought a drug to market. In case you missed that, the company leading the vaccine race has never made an FDA approved drug. That's not uncommon for a new biotech company and the federal government supported Moderna's platform even before the pandemic. But the company does have another potential advantage its connection to the head of Operation Warp Speed, Monsef Slawi. Monsef Slawi came over after serving on the board of Moderna to run this operation as a contractor. This has led some people to have skepticism around his ties to the industry and the potential for him to have conflicts of interest. Slawi, a former pharma executive and venture capitalist, stepped down from the board of Moderna, which has seen stock prices triple since January. It's been extremely painful for me that anybody would uh, even think that I took this job to enrich myself or my former colleagues. And Slowey has another close relationship with another Warp Speed company, his former employer, GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK. In July, GSK received a $2.1 billion grant, the largest single investment under the program to date. As of May, Slowey owned over $10 million in shares of the company's stock. Even with all this money and effort, there's a chance a vaccine will never happen. 
Other types of coronavirus, such as MERS and SARS, have been known for decades. No vaccine has ever been approved for use in the U.S. against these strains. And researchers are still trying to figure out how people develop COVID-19 immunity and how long it lasts. Once we will know, I think the room for speculation will stop and the room for assessment and understanding will, will start. But even if scientists can unlock those secrets, the plan for how the government will deliver a vaccine to hundreds of millions of Americans remains unclear. There are very few pharmaceutical companies that have the manufacturing capabilities and expertise to ramp up the process so quickly and at these massive scales. And for Operation Warp Speed, there's still one major known unknown. Will people take it? The last time the federal government funded a mass immunization campaign for a new virus, it did not go according to plan. In February 1976, after a U.S. soldier died from a new strain of swine flu, the government orchestrated a $137 million public immunization campaign. But the pandemic never came, and research showed that the swine flu vaccine may have made some people sick with a rare autoimmune disorder. It's an incident that anti-vaxxers point to as proof that all vaccines are unsafe and that the government can't be trusted to develop them. It's an opinion that's amplified by social media. Recent surveys indicate that just half of Americans plan to get a coronavirus vaccine. Some speculate that anti-vaccine disinformation may convince enough people that it could derail efforts around a coronavirus vaccine. I think most people are, are vaccine skeptics, as they should be. I think you should be skeptical of anything you put in your body. I think it's a small percentage of people who are vaccine cynics. Some are treating misinformation as its own kind of infection. It's over double the amount of information online than it was in December. In a pandemic, you need the right information. And if you look for information about vaccines on social media sites or on websites, the misinformation finds you. Search engines are likely to recommend conspiracy theory videos about 5G or Bill Gates. It's much harder to get accurate science-based information to go viral. Just look at how quickly masks became a polarizing issue. There is concern that the Trump administration could attempt to similarly politicize the vaccine, setting up an October surprise announcement, just in time for the presidential election. Could you assure the American people that politics and considerations around the election will not interfere in the science? We want to make people better. We want to send them to the areas that most need it. And I think we're going to have something very soon. It's going good. Science shouldn't be political. The, um, in the case of vaccines, we should, we should allow this process to proceed the way that it's proceeded for the last 70 years, which is to say phase one, phase two, phase three trials, and then licensure. Operation Warp Speed is a gamble with incredibly high stakes. The reopening of the economy, the 2020 election, and the promise of a return to a new normal. There's so much urgency on this moment to have a vaccine where if the science doesn't live up to the political expectations around these programs, it's, it's hard to imagine what would happen if these vaccines just don't work. 